Okay. Well, I'll show something interesting in a minute here. Um, I've been dabbling in Python for about six years. Uh, I first started learning it because it was a cool new thing and it was named after Monty Python and that was good enough for me. Um, <clears throat> but over the years, I keep using it more and more. And so I'm going to talk about that specific project but I also want to make this kind of a love letter to Python, why it is I'm starting to really love the language. Um, most of what I've done in my career has been working with data visualization and the work you have to do to get that working. And I went to a talk uh, a couple months ago at the San Diego Visualization Meetup, and there was a guy there who said, according to a survey, people that do uh, various kinds of data science spend 80% of their time on data prep. And that actually sounds about right to me. Um, in the early days, I used to use SED a lot. Uh, I've done a lot with AUK. Uh, these are tools I could grab and very quickly get something to happen. Like I want to double everything in a given column and leave everything else alone unless there's a null and then I want to put something in, you know. Um, but more recently, I started using Python for these kind of tasks and I was amazed at how small the code was and how quickly I got things done. Um, and that's pretty much all the Python coding I've done in the last six years. I did a check before coming in tonight. And uh, the program I'm about to show you is the longest Python program I've ever written at about 187 lines. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, it's, it, it's coding in it is so quick that I feel like I can embark on stupid projects now. And uh, the, I can manage the risk very well because I know, you know, it's not going to take me very long. Um, if you ever read the book Blink, he talks about how the thing that you're great at is whatever you've done 10,000 hours of. And I would say for me that 10,000 hours were spent writing C code. Now I've written other code, Java, you know, C++, uh, Objective-C, all kinds of different stuff. But um, C is the one I, I was in the trenches with the longest. And so I compare every new language to C. And one of the things I noticed immediately with Python is that it's like 10 times shorter. Can't freaking believe it. And I remember uh, Steve Jobs once said that the line of code you don't have to write is the one you don't have to debug and you don't have to maintain. And I'm completely on board with that. The other thing that I just love about Python is it's fun to learn. Um, I'm reminded of a time back about 10 years ago when I had a BlackBerry and an iPhone at the same time. Because I had to have the BlackBerry for my job and I bought the phone, the iPhone with my own money just because I liked owning it. And it was so freaking hard to learn the BlackBerry because it couldn't really teach you. You had to get the manual out, a million little keys. Whereas the iPhone was fun to learn. I would sit and fiddle with it, and the more I fiddled, the more I learned. And it was just like an automatic snowballing process. And I recognize that process now because it's going on with me again with Python, that I actually fiddle with it uh, for no good reason, just because I want to learn something. Which brings me to the project I did here. Um, let me add a tab here. If I go to the Internet Movie Database and look for the 12 o'clock high TV show. I was watching a whole, I binge watched the entire show 12 o'clock high on uh, YouTube. I don't even think it's supposed to be there. And um, I actually had a real project. I'm, I'm doing research on the history of the Southern California aerospace industry and I really wanted to see those B-17 bombers that they refurbished and used in the show. So I, I got uh, heavily into this. But I noticed it seemed very strange to me that a lot of the actors that were on this show were also on a lot of other shows that were active at the same time, which, which kind of makes sense. The union was only so big. They were shooting everything in L.A. And so all these different people ended up in all these different shows. And I started making a little matrix. And it was fun. It's like, wow, sure, a lot of people that were on the Twilight Zone that were on this show and people that were on Bewitched. But then I, I quickly realized I was dealing with uh, almost 300 actors. I was doing more than 70 TV shows. And uh, I was going to have to make 30,000 trips to Internet Movie Database to fill this whole thing out. And I went, well, heck with it. I'm not going to do it. It's the end of story. I, I, I have a life. It's not that important to me to know this. But then I got to thinking, I'll bet Python could do this. And sure enough, it could. So um, I'll go ahead and show you my code now. Uh, or, yeah, I just called it imdb.py. Can you see this? Blow it up here. All right. Yeah. 
So I guess today put the parameters on, on flags because I felt changed to have code where they just aren't coded. But <coughs> so now you can actually specify. And I also I'm uh, passing in the length of each file, which I know is awkward. But on the other hand, it makes testing great because I can just crank those numbers down and produce little cases. Um, so what I had this thing doing initially was going out for each of the almost 300 actors. It would check with each of the more than 70 TV shows to see if they were in that show. And I was trying to do my array so that it's an HTML table with actors um, across and shows, I'm oh, sorry, actors down, shows across. So when I did it in the order I was going to write it out, I ended up having to do these 30,000 visits to Internet Movie Database. And I timed it, and it was going to take two days to run. Um, I let it run for one day because I had a wife and was off doing other things, and it crashed, and I went, okay, time to refactor. And I went, well, gee, if I visit each page for the TV show once and then search for all the actors on that page because i got a copy in the buffer, it should go faster. Sure enough, it did. It took five minutes. So there's a, a little commercial for refactoring. Um, one of the other things I just love here is where I go through and... Um, I um, read the web page. Yeah. Uh, what? Uh, no, I'm still reading. Uh, oh, here we go. My file equals f dot read. Now, if I was going to code that in C, I would have to go, gee, how big is this going to be anyway? Uh, I just guess and create an array, and I'm like, well, that doesn't seem right. If, if I want to be elegant, I should be doing a malloc, and I should be creating just the right size. And now I've got a page of code that isn't very readable or maintainable, and here's good old Python just doing it all for me in one line. And I'm like, thank you so much. This is, this is why at the end of every programming session with Python, I just feel elated. Like, the, the language rises to meet me, you know? I had no clue when I started this if it was even possible to do what I wanted to do, but I went, hey, Python is an internet language, it's gotta be possible. So um, let me show you what the result looks like. And uh, here we go. So I have it automatically generate this guide to the 71 TV shows, which are then across the top. <laughs> and here, now of course, every one of these actors was in the show 12 o'clock. So the left column is blacked in completely. Um, <laughs> let me make this a little smaller so we can see something here. Yeah, I went ahead and, and color coded on the right uh, all the low and high values. There are a number of actors that were only in 12 o'clock high and nothing else. There's something else on this list. There was this one guy who was in the most shows. What? Uh, Here, I'll just start at the top again. It's, it should be a pink highlight. Well, who cares? Um, it was a guy I'd never heard of. He just only does character actor parts. He's never been famous for anything. But he just got a lot of jobs. You know, look good in a uniform. <clears throat> I was also able to determine the show that had the most crossover of actors, and that, that's on the bottom row. Oh, there was your guy. Ah, yeah, there he is. 29. Uh, Byron Morrow. Anyone ever heard of Byron Morrow? No. If you Google him, in, you'll go, oh, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then the show that had the most, I actually had an off by one error, and I posted on Facebook, oh, my God, the the highest overlap is with Bewitched, but no, it's Bonanza, which makes more sense. So, uh, bottom line, this is a stupid project. Uh, I had nothing but intellectual curiosity driving me, but I never would have done it if it was hard. And Python made it really easy, and I'm just tickle pink. Um, in terms of what I didn't do here, uh, there's a couple of things. Um, I had some actors that had uh, accents on their names, 
and I, I had to choose between presenting the name in such a way that it rendered nicely in HTML versus uh, dealing with the name in a form that the search would succeed when I was looking for them. And uh, I still have, it's always like a design issue here. What's the most elegant way to fix this without having to have two columns in my input data? And speaking of uh, input data, um, if we look at my, uh, my shows, I just went ahead and put the name of the show, comma, the URL to get to it. And there's got to be a way to coerce Internet Movie Database into giving you this information, but I didn't find it quickly. And since there were only 71 shows, I just managed to get through For the actors, since there were almost 300, I managed to find that automatically. Also, at the beginning of every page, is, for each actor is a list of, no, it's on the page for the shows. There's a list of the crew, the writers, directors, all that stuff. If any of these actors also served as crew, I'm getting a false positive hit on them. So I should add more code that skips over the crew section. But I haven't done that yet. Um, let me very quickly go back to the source code and see what else I had here. Uh, yeah, I think I've mentioned all the things that I uh, that are on my to-do list that I haven't done yet. Anyway, and one day I may go back and finish this. Maybe not. Like I said, there's no funding. Uh, <laughs> I don't see how I have anything possible to gain from this except for that I got to talk to you all tonight. So thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>